Hello and welcome to another episode of the Saltwater Edge Introduction to Saltwater Fly Fishing. In this episode we're going to discuss leaders and tippet. We previously covered backing and fly line. Now it's leaders and tippet and the last part of that system of course would be the fly which we'll discuss in the next video. Leaders exist to um, present the fly to the fish but more importantly to transfer the energy created in the fly line down to the fly. So in this example, here's the fly line unfurling after it's been cast, and fly line, there's the leader, there's the butt section and transition down to a tippet, and ultimately the fly. And then that energy is transferred uh, so that the whole system lays out straight. That's how you reach your target, right, is by fully unfurling the fly line. So as you consider fly lines, there's a couple of attributes to think about and you're gonna dial these in for your particular fishing situation. First off is materials. There's fluorocarbon and mono. Fluorocarbon and mono. Uh, mono ties better knots, uh, it's softer, it seats better, and uh, it has, uh, it's less expensive. Uh, fluorocarbon's a bit more expensive, it's harder, so it's got abrasion resistance, which is a good thing, but that, that hardness makes it harder to tie knots in heavier materials, okay? So that's part of the selection process, materials. Another criteria is strength. Um, and generally, you're gonna to try to match the strength of the tippet to the species you're after. Um, and inshore on a flat or something like that, redfish, that kind of thing, it might be a 12 pound tippet, right? Relatively light. Um, standard inshore, maybe from a boat or wading striped bass, things like that on the beaches here in New England, probably 20 pound. If you're on a boat or fishing with a sinking line on deep structure where there's um, other uh, um, hazards, you know, um, having a stiffer, uh, stronger leader can be very helpful. And some people might use 30 pound in that situation for deep structure. And then there's uh, quite complicated leader systems that are used on the big offshore fly fishing, which probably beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. Um, so as it relates to length, the same kind of thing occurs. Where's the scenario that you're fishing? And if you're in that back country where we were talking about, or, or redfish, um, you're gonna want a longer uh, leader to land more quietly and, and, and separate the fly line landing on the water from the fly landing in the water. And so that's the reason for length. Um, still would be about a 12 pound tippet. Common scenarios here in New England, striped bass, maybe it's seven feet, eight feet, and to uh, probably 20 pound in a lot of cases. Um, uh, something to keep in mind if you're fishing deeper water with the sinking lines, the ones we discussed in the previous episode that sink seven inches a second, um, you're gonna want a shorter leader because the line's gonna sink fast and the fly and leader are gonna lag behind. So if you shorten up the leader, you bring the fly uh, and leader system down with the fly line that's sinking fast. So that's a consideration to keep in mind. So we've discussed material, strength and length. Another topic is um, do you tie your own leaders or do you buy? You can certainly buy off the shelf leaders. In some situations they're not as stiff in the butt as we'd like, um, which then might make it harder for a beginner to turn over and make that transfer of energy we talked about right in the beginning. Um, so uh, it's less expensive probably to tie your own. I'll give you a formula um, that has three components. You know the butt section goes from my hand to my sternum, that's the heaviest. The next section is about 30% of the total length and it's um, uh, called the transition. And then the last section is about 20% of the total length and that's called the tippet. And for a typical striped bass leader, that might be 40 pounds, 20 pound, 30 pounds, 20 pounds. Turns into a eight foot striped bass leader. The knot I would suggest for tying the tippet to the, any knots you need to tie in the leader system itself is, is a double surgeons. It's just basically two overhand knots. We have um, an article, a blog post, Essential Saltwater Fly Fishing Knots, you can check out, I'd suggest you do. It's one of the ones that get about the most visits of all the stuff we've done. And um, the double surgeons is something you can tie when you hands a cold, you can tie it in the dark. There's other more advanced knots you could use, but suffice to say the double surgeons has the strength and simplicity that makes it an excellent choice. So um, probably the thing to be most concerned about if, 
whether you bought a leader or built a leader, is watch when the fly line is finishing um, and the transition between the fly line and the leader. If the butt's not stiff enough, there'll be a hinge there and it'll make it difficult to, to efficiently transfer that power. But that's the only thing to be on a watch out for. Otherwise, um, I want to thank you for joining us for this episode. And I'd suggest you go to saltwateredge.com. In the upper right-hand corner is the Learn button. At that point, you'll find podcasts, blog posts, and videos around surf, fly, and inshore fishing. Hopefully, something there will help make you a better fisherman. If you have any questions at all about anything we've discussed in this introduction series, I would encourage you to send us an email at support at saltwateredge.com and uh, we'll answer every question. If you have, uh, if we end up using your question in an upcoming video, we're gonna send you a $25 gift card. So look forward to seeing you in the next episode, which will finish this tackle system with a discussion of flies and fly design.